This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Friday, May 15, 2015. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to Reuters, Islamic State militants raised their black flag over the local government compound in the Iraqi city of Ramadi on Friday after overrunning most of the western provincial capital. The insurgents attacked Ramadi overnight using six suicide car bombs to reach the city center, where the Anbar government compound is located. Fighting continued on Friday in parts of Ramadi, and government forces were still in control of a military command center in the west of the city. If Ramadi were to fall completely to Islamic State, it would be a strategic blow to Prime Minister Hader al-Abadi's government. Barely six weeks after the army and Shiite militias recaptured the city of Tikrit from Islamic State. Second today, according to Hattiesburg, Mississippi American, in his 34 years, Hattiesburg Police Department patrolman Benjamin J. Dean managed to live a life that meant so much to so many others. On Thursday, his family acts that his life have an even bigger impact with his death. Dean was the first of the two Hattiesburg police officers who lost their lives last Saturday to be laid to rest. Dean and patrolman LaCory Tate both died from a single gunshot wound inflicted during a traffic stop. They were the first Hattiesburg Police Department officers killed in the line of duty in more than 30 years. Third today, according to the Washington Times, China is offering to sell Jordan missile-firing drones to fight the Islamic State terror army, according to a U.S. congressman. Representative Duncan Hunter, a California Republican, said in a letter on Thursday to President Obama, I am now aware that China is presently in Jordan to discuss operations, logistics, and maintenance associated with the urgent sale of weaponized unmanned systems. Representative Hunter has pressed the Obama administration to no avail to approve the sale of the Predator unmanned surveillance aircraft to the kingdom. Fourth today, according to the Washington Post, as Europe struggles to stem a spring flood of migrants from Africa and the Middle East trying to cross a deadly Mediterranean Sea, Israel has begun to toughen its stance toward refugees. Israeli authorities are sending letters to the first of 45,000 Eritrean and Sudanese refugees, informing them they have 30 days to accept Israel's offer of $3,500 in cash and a one-way ticket home or to an unnamed third country in Africa or face incarceration in prison. Israeli leaders have proclaimed that their tough approach, building a fence along its borders, denying work permits for illegal migrants, forcing them into a detention center in the desert, and so forth, may ultimately save lives by dissuading migrants from attempting a perilous journey. Critics of the Israeli policy counter that a country built by refugees should be more accepting of those fleeing war, poverty, and oppression. Fifth today, according to Religion News Service, after decade-long resistance, the Southern Baptist Convention will admit missionary candidates who speak in tongues, a practice associated with Pentecostal and Charismatic churches. The new policy approved by the denomination's International Mission Board on Wednesday reverses a policy that was put in place 10 years ago, allowing Southern Baptist missionaries to speak in tongues or have what some SBC leaders call a private prayer language speaks to the growing strength of Pentecostal churches in Africa, Asia, and South America, where Southern Baptists are competing for converts and where energized new Christians are enthusiastically embracing the practice. Six today, according to the Associated Press, Nepalese rescuers on Friday found three bodies near the wreckage of a U.S. Marine helicopter that disappeared earlier this week while on a relief mission in the earthquake-hit Himalayan nation. An official said it was unlikely there were any survivors from the crash. The helicopter was carrying six Marines and two Army soldiers. Seven today, according to Reuters, eight people were killed, including seven children, when a rocket hit a residential building in the city of Benghazi in eastern Libya on Thursday, two days after a similar attack claimed by Islamic State militants. A Reuters reporter saw several dead children in a hospital in the city, the oil-producing North African state, second largest, where army forces and Islamist factions have been fighting each other for a year. The other person killed in Thursday's rocket strike was an adult whose gender was not immediately known, and 11 people were wounded. 
Eighth today, according to the Wall Street Journal, as the Supreme Court considers whether to strike down state laws barring same-sex couples from marrying, let's take a step back and look at how far the nation has moved on attitudes toward gays and lesbians. In 2003, 56% of Americans opposed allowing gay and lesbian couples to enter into same-sex marriages. The March Wall Street Journal NBC News poll, like other national polls, found that 59% of Americans favor same-sex marriage. But Americans' increasing acceptance of gays and lesbians goes well beyond support for same-sex marriage. 76% of Americans say that when it comes to the way society deals with homosexuality, we have reached a reasonable balance. 32% or not gone far enough in ending discrimination against homosexual people at 44%. By contrast, just 20% of Americans believe that we have gone too far in accepting homosexuality. In 2006, 43% of Americans said they would be enthusiastic or comfortable with a gay or lesbian as president. Today, that share has jumped 18% to 61% of Americans, according to the latest poll. Nine today, according to AFP, 72 people died when a fire tore through a footwear factory in Metro Manila in the Philippines. Authorities said on yesterday, while survivors blamed barred windows for the disaster and described sweatshop conditions. Nearly all of those killed in Wednesday's five-hour blaze were trapped on the second floor of the two-story building, unable to break steel bars over the windows. Philippine Secretary of the Interior, Mar Rocas, promised justice for the people killed as he expressed anger over a lack of fire exits and the reported cause of the blaze, which was welding that was being carried out near flammable chemicals. Tenth and finally today, according to the Associated Press, B.B. King, the legendary blues singer, songwriter, and guitarist, died Thursday in Las Vegas. He was 89 years old. Attorney Brent Bryson told the Associated Press that King died peacefully in his sleep at 9.40 p.m. local time at his home, where he had been in hospice care. Bryson added that funeral arrangements were being made. Although King had continued to perform well into his 80s, the 15-time Grammy winner suffered from diabetes and had been in declining health during the past year. He had 15 biological and adopted children, and family members say 11 of those children survive. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Ecclesiastes 11.5 says, As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Maltby Davenport Babcock said, What a man says and what a man is must stand together.